Look at this. Whoa. 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 I'm free of these? Yeah. How sweet. Shopping with the Mathis family is a boisterous affair. It's little wonder. Mum and Dad have five children in tow, including triplets. It is so pretty. I love the polka dots. Dad, I want this to pull my hair up and then match my boots. Koi is the eldest of the trio and gravitates towards all things pink and shiny. I'm going to dress that matches my boots in a headband that got matches my boots. But Koi wasn't always wearing dresses. The seven-year-old was born a boy, but lives as a girl. I'd much rather have a, a good relationship with the daughter that I have than a poor relationship with a son that doesn't really exist. For Koi's doting parents, Jeremy and Catherine, it's been an eye-opening journey. That is totally not my son. This is totally your son. You no. hold on to it. She was two here, I think. That's just who she was. That's who she's always been. Really, as soon as she could talk, she was showing us and telling us that she felt like a girl. And it wasn't until she was, you know, closer to two and a half and three that she started saying, you know, I don't want to be a girl, I am a girl. She was trying so hard to tell us how she felt and we were ignoring her. Um, and so she started sinking into a depression and started having a bunch of anxiety about going anywhere where people would know that she was a boy. Yeah, you would die. Koi's parents hoped it was a phase that would pass, but as the years went by, their son's insistence that he was a she grew stronger. You happy? Yes. <laughs> she was constantly devastated because people didn't know who she really was. So we took her back to the various medical professionals and they all agreed that um, she was transgender. So I want to be, when I grow up, a, a worker, a firefighter, and I want to be a cowboy girl. It can't be. Koi was diagnosed with gender identity disorder. It's a condition characterized by overwhelming feelings of identification with the opposite sex, of being born into the wrong body. For the past year, Koi has been living openly as a girl after making what experts call a social transition to the other gender. She went from you know, being anxious and depressed and not wanting to go anywhere to almost overnight being thrilled with herself and wanting everybody to see her and who she was. And I mean, it was just this huge difference in her just because people were finally listening and knew that she was a girl. Born a boy, now identified as a girl. A six-year-old from Colorado now at the center of a media frenzy in a lawsuit for being transgender. They say the decision to ban Koi from the girls' bathrooms at Eagleside Elementary was plain wrong. The letter stated that Koi was born a male, and at least some parents and students are likely to become uncomfortable with his continued use of the girls' restroom. Just like Yeah. Wow. Yep. Whatever. We can do the other ones tomorrow. Okay, fun. <laughs> Infuriated by the bathroom ban, Catherine and Jeremy lodged a discrimination complaint with the state of Colorado and started homeschooling their children. The case has become an unlikely rallying point for transgender rights. I don't even see why the school thinks it's their responsibility to try to talk about Koi's body at all. It's completely inappropriate to me. Um, they're not her doctors. They don't, they should not be talking about her body. It's a boy named Nick that was helping, helping she was a girl, and he was a girl in the mirror and a boy outside. And what's the name of this book? Be Who You Are. It says here, right here too, Be Who You Are. Gotcha. You have a change gender girl. What's that mean? I'm mean, using it on a girl instead of a boy. Mm hmm. Okay. And then what happened when you wanted to use the bathroom? The girls won. They said I have to use the um, doctor's restroom or the um, uh, boy's restroom. And then what did you think about that? I thought it was mean. I 
In Seattle, Eli Ehrlich and her friend Max are enjoying some retail therapy. <laughs> so not you. I know, but it'd be so awesome. <laughs> like most 17-year-olds, they like shopping and hanging out. Yes, sir. Uh, five. That's why. At the bowling alley, they barely draw a second glance. And that's the way they like it. For them, it's an affirmation of their gender journey. Now it's, it's so much easier and everything's a lot better. Eli was born a boy but lives as a girl. Which is hard for you, I And Max was born a girl but lives as a boy. I mean, I think part of the reason trans people are coming out younger is because there's more visibility. So like, like I don't know, talking to older trans people sometimes who came out really late, like a lot of times they say they came out that late because they didn't even know like that trans was a thing or that they could be trans. Both have been following the case of the Mathis family closely. I think the parents are doing the right thing and the school has no right to take away her bathroom rights. Eli has first-hand experience of what Koi is going through. I couldn't use the restrooms at my school for six years, even after I, I was in third grade and I was wearing dresses and lip gloss, and they wouldn't let me use either bathroom. And so how long have you been living as a girl for? I've been living as a girl since I was 13, and so it's been four years now. This is my makeup counter. I've always really been into makeup. My, I like many transgender kids, Eli also learned to mask the pain. Throughout her life, she's faced prejudice, bullying and harassment. Um, in elementary and middle schools, it was very difficult. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't participate with the girls and I was always singled out and I didn't have very many friends then because of it. Eli has taken female hormones since the age of 15. Three months ago, she went under the knife, becoming one of the youngest people ever to undergo gender reassignment surgery. Does it feel strange that you now don't have something that you've had for 17 years in a part of your body? <laughs> um, strangely, no, I was expecting to, but it, it just feels natural this way. Eli, I haven't seen you in ages. Eli hasn't seen her surgeon, Marcy Bowers, since her operation. Okay, so breast growth, did that come along a little bit since? Not really. That a pioneer in her field, Marcy herself was born as Mark. She's regarded as one of the leading transgender surgeons in the US. Very good. Are you seeing more transgender patients, particularly young people and children? What well, we are seeing more, but it's because society is becoming more permissive and not pushing people into the closet uh, or, or worse into, into antisocial behavior or chemical dependency or suicide. Uh, we do know still that 50% of transgender youth attempt or commit suicide. And uh, so that, that's a, still a troubling statistic. Hi, Bella. These days, Walt Heyer is a man's man and a deep skeptic, particularly when it comes to transgender surgery. Most of the people suffering from gender issues are suffering from psychological disorders that need treatment and not surgery. So, you know, my life is just a testimony to the fact that you can't change somebody's gender with surgery. Throughout life, Walt had felt uncomfortable in his own skin. He went on to get married and have a family, but in his 40s realised he was living a lie. This is Laura after the gender change. This is Laura after the gender At 42, change. Walt underwent surgery and became Laura. Eight years later, depressed and despairing, he changed back. In the process, he lost his wife, became estranged from his children, and was left with the results of an operation that was irreversible. The way I betrayed my children by switching genders is reprehensible, and it meant that I, how selfish I was. 
Walt has been married to his second wife, Casey, for 17 years. What goes through your mind, Casey, when you see pictures of Walt looking obviously so different? You know, it, um, it's really shocking. I mean, I didn't know him then. And I, I can't, you know, I can't even imagine what it's like to have the same Walt, the same kidding around, the same sense of humor, but dressed um, as a female. It just, it blows my mind. And this river here is just gorgeous, you know. She wanted somebody tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> she got somebody who's very short, old, and not all that handsome, but you know, you You're can't have adorable. everything. Yeah. These days, Walt's the happiest oh, like he's ever been. No so. longer Laura. At 72 years old, he's finally comfortable with being a man. While regret is rare in the world of transgender surgery, Walt says his story should serve as a warning to others. Why all of a sudden do we have all these people with gender issues? I can tell you because we're promoting it. We're making it fashionable. And, you know, kids are going to be left without a real childhood because people aren't reinforcing who they are in their gender that they were born with. Since he was a kid, Max Jansen has loved his weekly drumming lesson. A student who's transformed before his teacher's eyes. Even with the changes, it's the same person. I don't see a different... It's still Max. Mm. Well, it used to be Mac. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mac. Born as a girl named Mackenzie, Max began living as a boy at age eight. He started taking male hormones at 14 and had surgery to remove his breasts a year ago. Today, the 16-year-old is planning to march to the beat of a different drum. Max is on his way with his mum, Tammy, to the annual Pride Parade in Phoenix, Arizona. Is there a lot of um, transgender people here in Phoenix? There's quite a few trans people and they're really coming out of the woodwork and becoming a community. So I'm just coming out here to remind people that there are trans people and they do deserve rights just as much as anyone else. Max is in his element, as are the 70 other marchers from the transgender community. This year, they have plenty to shout about. We're here! We're trans! We're gonna use your can! Once again, it's the contentious issue of bathroom use that's front and centre. We're trans, we're proud, we're not going anywhere, and um, SB 1045 hurts everyone, not just trans people. I stand before you today to see that the targeted and hateful proposal SB 1045 is struck down. SB 1045 is a state bill that would have made it an offence for a transgender person to use the bathroom of their choice, with a penalty of up to six months in jail and a fine of up to two and a half thousand dollars. If the authors of this bill had an opportunity to actually get to know a transgender person, they would come to realise that we're just people. We're good, caring, honest, intelligent, talented, creative people. As architect of the bathroom bill, Arizona state legislator John Kavanaugh has become the transgender community's enemy number one. Uh, the problem is when such a person goes into a shower at a swimming pool or a locker room at a gym, which this bill covers, uh, they very often will, will become totally undressed and they would be exposing um, their entire body to females or perhaps even young girls. This is unacceptable, uh, so I ran a bill to prevent that from happening. I guess the bottom line is you know, the transgendered people represent an extremely minute fraction of the population, and uh, I'm not really sure if I want to make 90% of the people really upset and really concerned, especially when children are involved, to placate a minute minority. So please, Please, for the sake of my safety and for the sake of my love for my community, vote no. Okay, thank you.
Amid the outcry, the bill has been watered down, but it still allows business owners to dictate their own rules for private bathrooms. Committee members, I beg you, please do not pass this. I am scared to go into a men's bathroom. Okay. Shame, 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 shame. Next time you use the restroom, think about what if someone confronted you while you were in there and said you shouldn't be in here because you don't look like the gender that you say you are. You know, that's a scary thing for a person to have to deal with every day. Could this is that cool? Use of the bathroom is just one of the many challenges awaiting Koi Mathis and transgender kids like her. But Koi's proud mum Catherine says she wouldn't have it any other way. We would rather have a child that's happy and a little bit different than what we imagined than have a child that's depressed and unhappy. Being transgender shouldn't be something to be ashamed of. You're just a little bit different. And, and we just kind of need to get to that point in society that it's okay to be who you are, even if you're not the ideal.